Ike was talking about the changes in, in the media world. One of the buzzwords that we've been hearing for the last five, ten years uh, uh, is cross-media, trans-media. Um, and I mean, documentary film, we all know what that is. But trans-media or cross-media basically it just means that there are more medias involved. Huh? So it's absolutely not a, a definition that really defines what the product is. So we've asked uh, our colleague from Sweden, Annika, Annika Gustafsson from Boost, who are working with developing uh, talent in Sweden that are working with uh, trans media to, uh, to hold a lecture where we will hopefully be wiser about what are we talking about when we use the word trans media. Do we know that? Do we have Hi, I'm just going to see if I can get this one up. I'm working. I don't speak Russian. Could anybody help me here to put this one up? Do we have a technician here? Could anybody come and help me? Ludmila, can you help me? I need, I need to know which I picked to actually scroll. Where do I make this big, the whole? Okay. You, you would like to make it bigger? Yes, because I have it should be something with the presentation material. Okay. Oh, there, there. I didn't see that. See, I'm actually a very analog person. I prefer this thing. It never fails. Um, let's see if we can go back. So anyways, I'm Annika Gustafsson and I'm heading Boost HPD in Sweden. We deal a lot with transmedia development. Before uh, I talk about transmedia, I always like to take us back to the beginning where everything started. Um, I come from a traditional filmmaker background. And to see if this one wants to play now. See, I hate technology. No. This normally plays when I test. Um, does anybody know this picture? This is the first film shot in 1895. Back then when films rolled, when you played them. Um, 118 years ago, we invented the movie camera for scientific purposes. And very soon, we incorporated it to, sh to make stories. But the first thing we did was that we liked to film things that moved, which they don't do today. I'm sorry for that. Um, and we were very impressed. Look, it's moving. One of my ancestors made a fortune in the early 1900s, traveling around in the countryside in southern Sweden, showing movies of things that moved. But what happened after a while was that we got tired of things moving and we wanted a story and we invented the language of cinema. At first, we were very slow and we had a very good idea. Put the camera in the middle of the theater room and just film the theatric play like it was. Eventually, we developed we invented a language of close-ups, of cutting, of moving directions, and a whole new genre was born. Now, to move you forward 118 years, does anybody play Minecraft in Russia? Do you play Minecraft? Do you know this game? Yes. Ika plays Minecraft. It's basically Lego for, for your iPad. Um, my kid is seven. She's building libraries with Minecraft. But today we have children that are building up entire worlds and playing in this world on the internet and competing together. So these are the new storytellers of the future. And what we will discover with the audience is that whenever we have a new technology, we change how we tell our stories. This has always happened. At first we're impressed by things moving, and then eventually we want a story. 
And everything we've discovered today about our audience is that it's not passive, right, Iken? Uh, he's checking his email. Our audience, it's not passive anymore, right? As I said, they don't like watching TV on a Saturday at 7 o'clock. They want to watch it whenever they want to watch it. It's I, me, and my show now. And everything with the audience is that not only that, they're also active and creative. And I don't know what you do in Russia, but one thing they do a lot in the West on Facebook is putting pictures of cats. This is who we are today. Do you put pictures of cats on Facebook in Russia? I've tried to figure that. No? This is a trend. Basically, you take a cat, you hold it up, and you make a cat beard. It's my favorite. But this is where the audience are today. They're very, very creative. They want to play. And today we have possibilities. It's a little bit hard to read, but this is not something you have to memorize. I'll happily give you my slides afterwards. But this is what we call the story universe, with all the possibilities we have today to make a story move to different screens. I'm not saying that it should. I'm saying that you should keep things very, very simple when you deal with transmedia. But can you read this? I mean, we used to have the movie on the top, or maybe the TV series and the novel, those three things. And then about 10 years ago, things started to change. And I'm just going to read what we have. We have flash mobs, we have the iPhone, we have DVDs, we have iPad tablets, websites, YouTube, we have graphic novels. Oh, down here is a documentary, look. Toys, theater, comics, social games, all of that can incorporate it into transmedia. So I'm going to talk about two genres in transmedia. Oh, that's exactly what I say. This, this picture and that picture is pretty much the same, right? What do you choose when you make a product? Do you take all of those? That makes, it makes you feel like that. To me, what we say is transmedia is a way of thinking. It's not about incorporating a lot of different platforms, doing a lot of different stuff. It's just a way of thinking. Today we have more possibilities than we had yesterday. They will transform the way we are creating our stories. They already are transforming it. There are two genres in documentary uh, where they see very clearly. One is entertainment, where you use...